Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehekianu Vikiamanu, Vehigianu Lazman Hazeh. Please be seated. Members of the class of 2018, families, friends, and colleagues, it is my pleasure to welcome you here today for our annual baccalaureate service. Welcome to all of you. For many of you graduates, this is a hectic time of receptions and gatherings. Perhaps you've returned from a week off campus celebrating with friends. Maybe you've spent the past couple of days frantically packing or getting ready to welcome family. This might feel like a whirlwind weekend, but relax and make this baccalaureate service a time for reflection. Be present with us in this special moment. As you reflect on your time here at Gettysburg, you will surely think about people you've gotten to know a theme that I'll pick up on tomorrow during your commencement ceremony. You'll think of faculty who've advised you, encouraged you, challenged you, helped ignite your academic passions, sometimes exasperated you. Faculty who've helped you select courses or have mentored you through research or treated you and your classmates to a meal together. Of course, there are many other people sometimes working quietly behind the scenes, who've also contributed to a residential experience. Advisors and mentors in our Center for Global Education, the Center for Public Service, the Garthwaite Leadership Center, the Eisenhower Institute, and our Center for Career Development who have motivated you to explore new opportunities and communities here in Gettysburg, across the country, and around the world. Coaches, academic advisors, and work-study supervisors, many of whom have encouraged you to be your best selves and who have kept an eye out for you while you've been away from your families. The many hands across campus that have brought together traditional events like our annual Thanksgiving dinner, your first year walk, twilight hour, and celebration. Groundskeepers who maintain our beautiful campus, facility staff who have sometimes cleaned up after you, our DPS staff who've done their best to keep you safe, and bakers who make those great servo cookies we all love so much. As you reflect on your time at Gettysburg, you'll also think about your friends and acquaintances. You'll remember your first year roommate, regardless of whether you remain close. You'll recall shared meals, walks in town or on the battlefield, heart-to-heart -heart conversations over coffee, cheers of support as you played on a field or performed on a stage, and long hours together in the library. And really, who can forget those late nights at LDs? <laughs> Here at Gettysburg, it's the people who make this place so very special. And of course, each of you has been part of this community as well and have made contributions to it for which we are very grateful. The bonds that you have forged with each other and with this college are lifelong. You will always be a Gettysburgian. Tomorrow, you'll join the ranks of Gettysburg College alumni, a community of nearly 30,000 accomplished and engaged individuals who've changed the world in both subtle and powerful ways. And that is certainly a cause for celebration. Still, we will be sad to see you go. We will miss you. Yet, we're excited to see what the future holds for you and we look forward to hearing about your accomplishments in the years to come. And of course, remember that you will always have a home here at Gettysburg College. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you.
Hello, class of 2018 and guests. My name is Kate Helmstetter, and I am honored to be speaking to you today. Before I begin, I would like to thank my parents, Bill and Marcy Helmstetter, and the rest of my family and friends for all the support they have given me throughout my time at Gettysburg. I would not be here today without you. Nearly four years ago, we sat in front of Penn Hall and imagined what our lives would be like for the next four years. Having spent only a few hours on campus, we dreamed of everything that we would do here. We imagined ourselves playing on sports teams and winning national championships, starting clubs that would change our campus for the better, and achieving our full potential. We saw ourselves becoming scholars, leaders, role models, and change makers, and we wondered how this place would change us. We can now look back and realize just how far we've come. Gettysburg has taught us all so much, including the things that we didn't learn in the classroom. The laughter, the tears, the late night servo truck snacks, these things have made us who we are and formed the people that we've become. And now, after four transformative years, we're preparing to say goodbye. It may seem like we're leaving a lot behind, but as I reflected upon what I would like to say here today, I realized that while we are departing, the most important things that we learned here will stay with us. We'll never leave behind the things that truly matter. I recall a verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Of course, this verse has many interpretations, but I would like to share with you how I see it and how I think it applies to the time that we've spent here and the next steps that we'll take. Faith. College requires an immense amount of faith, as does graduation. Faith has followed us throughout this journey. Simply coming to Gettysburg required a tremendous leap of faith. We had to have faith in ourselves and our skills time and time again, whether we were tackling an important project for the Center for Public Service, playing a particularly difficult piece at the Sunderman Conservatory, completing challenging research at the Civil War Institute, or running a vital leadership development program for the Garthwaite Leadership Center, We've been confident that we are capable of doing what needs to be done and even exceeding the expectation. We've had faith that there will be others along the way who will help us on this journey. Now, as we're leaving a place that we've called home for four years, this faith still plays an important role. We have to have faith that we've learned all that we can and that we've become the people that we're meant to be. Gettysburg has prepared us well for whatever our futures hold. The next thing that remains is hope. We certainly will not leave behind the hope that we felt on our first days on campus when we dreamed of where our four years would take us. Gettysburg taught us to hope on an entirely new level because it gave us tools that we needed to achieve beyond our wildest dreams. Seemingly, every aspiration could be attained with help from our, from our professors and friends. And now, this hope takes a new form. We're hoping for a better tomorrow, a brighter future, coupled with the faith that we can make it happen. No matter what our vision is, We've learned to set the bar high and work tirelessly to reach it. And, of course, love. Consider the greatest of these three things. If there is one word that I would use to sum up all that we have done here and all that we will take with us, it is love. Of course, we've loved this school. Gettysburgians have a rare and deep... Our school spirit is unrivaled, and we see this not just in our excitement at sporting events or the logos on most of the shirts in our closets. We also demonstrate this love and our desire to watch Gettysburg College continue to grow and evolve, whether that means coming back for reunion weekend, offering externship opportunities to the next generation of Gettysburgians, or returning here to teach in the future. In our alma mater, we pledge to love, defend, and honor Gettysburg, and we take that seriously. We've also loved our classes, majors, and professors. The educational experience here is unparalleled. Professors have an infectious passion and they make learning exciting. Furthermore, they have taught us to take our academic interests, the things that we love to learn about, and find ways to apply them to real life scenarios so that we can make a difference in the world around us. But most importantly, over the years, we've loved each other. Four years ago, we were all strangers. However, over the course of this journey that we've taken together, we've become an integral part of each other's narratives. We're more than just classmates. We're a community that supports each other. We have made some of the best friends that we will ever have here. We crafted families. We created a network of people that want to help us succeed. And even more importantly, we learned to give selflessly to others 
and an act of love so that they can succeed too. And so, as everything changes for us, faith, hope, and love all remain. These three are constants. So, class of 2018, when we walk across the stage, I hope that we are able to simultaneously celebrate the great accomplishments we have made and the growth we've experienced, and also consider how we will bring faith, hope, and love that we have learned here to the next place that we go. Because these things will never leave us. They are the greatest things that we've learned here. They have shaped us, and in large part, they are what make us get as virgins. Thank you. A reading from Genesis. Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot son of Aran and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, 
And they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. A reading from Surah ad doha chapter 93 of the Qur'an. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wadduha wal layli idha saja. Ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala. Walil akhiratu khayran laka minal ula. Wala sawfa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda. ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث Hello, class of 2018. My name is Isaac Hawkins, and I have to say, many of the remarks that I'm about to make were already made by President Riggs. We used a lot of the same verbiage. <laughs> there are many things that I am thankful for. My family, my friends, my professors, all of the people who have gotten me to this day. There have been a number of experiences that have helped me to realize what I am thankful for. Here's one. Starting last summer, I had the opportunity to serve as a music ambassador for the conservatory on campus. In this position, I gave tours of Schmucker Hall to prospective music students. As a music education major, I had spent a lot of time there. And on these, as I gave these tours, I realized that they were becoming increasingly emotional for me. In each one, I was telling the story of my Gettysburg College career, explaining how I had navigated my time in the building, telling them all about the concert posters hanging on the walls, talking about different performances, the fun times with friends, getting ready for rehearsals, making sure that the prospective students were not just seeing a building, but they were imagining it filled with people making music, in leading these tours, I realized that I was talking about the things that I was most thankful for. There were a few things that I was always sure to tell them, the main one being communities like the marching band, which are places where I got to know that the buildings don't matter so much to me. It's the people that fill those buildings that matter. I understand that not everyone may share my experience of community at Gettysburg. And to say that my experience was perfect would be untrue. College is not easy. There are times in which we struggle being away from home, even as a senior, having to make independent choices for ourselves, feeling unwelcomed at Gettysburg or in the world because of mocking or hateful speech towards the color of your skin, your sexuality, the language you speak, your heritage, being degraded because of your identity is cause for feeling unwelcomed. Even so, my hope is that each member of the class of 2018 has found a person, a place, a group, something you can be thankful for in your time here. It doesn't have to be big. 
Personally, I am thankful for every time I walk into Servo and Regina welcomes me enthusiastically by name. I'm thankful for being able to sit outside on campus when the weather is beautiful. Just take one moment, close your eyes, and imagine something you are thankful for in the last four years. This place is nothing without the students, faculty, and staff that make it up. And it would not be the Gettysburg College it is today without us. Tomorrow, we will join the ranks of Gettysburg College alumni, and we can leave this place knowing that we have made an impact. For the past two years, I have called Gettysburg home. I have been here for four years, yes, but only after two years did I feel comfortable calling it that. And as we prepare to leave, this place will always hold that place in my heart. When we leave campus to begin our journey after college, I am convinced that the Gettysburg College Class of 2018 will go out and have an impact. We will go and do those things. We will go into the world and think of the things that we are thankful for from our time at Gettysburg and do those for others. For me, that will be joining communities of people who support and love each other. For me, that will be saying hello and smiling to people I see but I might not know. Gettysburg College Class of 2018, as we go out into the world, we must continually ask ourselves, how will we ensure that those things that fulfilled us here continue to fulfill us? And how will we go out into the world facilitating the experiences and times that we are thankful for at Gettysburg College? for others. Thank you. Please stand as you are able for the reading from the Gospel of Luke. 这时候,突然有一个律法师站起来试探耶稣说, 老师,我该做什么才会继承永恒的生命呢? 耶稣对他说, 律法上是怎么写的? 你是怎么读的呢? 他回答说, 你要以全心, 全灵, 全力, 全意爱主, 你的神, 并且要爱灵如己. 耶稣说, 你回答的对, 你这样去做, 就将活着。那个人却要显示自己为义，就对耶稣说：“那么谁是我的邻人呢？”耶稣对他说：“有一个人从耶路撒冷下到耶利哥去，途中遇到强盗，他们剥去他的衣服，把他打得半死，丢下他走了。
Jean-Claude Van Damme, Sylvester Stallone, Bruce Willis, and I watched all their movies. Superhero movies are included in this larger category of action movies, of course, and so I was really excited this spring when I finally got to see The Justice League. Now, there's one scene from that movie that has stayed with me these past weeks, one that I want to share with you today. As the movie is getting started, Batman is recruiting members for this new league that he will need for the fight that is coming, and Flash is one of the new recruits. We don't know exactly how old Flash is. He looks young, college age, almost like a graduating senior of 22 or 23. He's definitely younger than Batman and everyone else in the league, for that matter. But he's in, and he's excited, until it comes time for the first fight. As they're getting ready for battle, Flash takes Batman aside and says basically, look, I'm not ready for this. I haven't been in this situation before, and I'm not sure I can do it. I'm young, I'm green, I'm a little scared. Batman waits until he is done, and then he says, just save one. Just save one person, and then you'll know what to do. And so that's exactly what Flash does. He runs in, speed is his superpower after all, grabs one guy and zips out. He saves one, and then he saves another one, and another one, and another one, and he finds his purpose. I couldn't stop thinking about this as I was reflecting on the parable of the Good Samaritan that Yifei just read. In some ways, the core of Jesus' answer to the question of how we're called to live in the world, loving God and loving neighbor, is simply save one. In this story, one Jew who is in desperate need of rescue is placed directly in the path of three different people, each of whom makes a choice to save or not to save. The surprise of the story, of course, is that it's the Samaritan, the outsider, the outcast, the adversary, who takes a risk, puts himself out there, and saves one. He just saves one. But in doing that, he changes everything. He blows apart the traditional view of the world, the categories of friends and enemies, privileged and marginalized. And in some ways, that's the whole point of Jesus' ministry, really, to invite into God's loving family the whole world, insiders and outsiders alike, and to make us responsible for one another. So whether you follow Jesus or another religious leader, or whether you take as your life guide Batman or Flash or anybody else, the point is really the same. Start by saving one. Sometimes, seniors, I think that great pressure is placed on you, or more likely, you place it upon yourselves to save the world. You want to be the next Bill Gates, the next Maya Angelou, the next Neil deGrasse Tyson, the next Angela Merkel, the next Malala Yousafzai. And these aspirations are great, but sometimes they can feel a little overwhelming. I imagine that today, on the cusp of graduation, some of you might feel a little bit like Flash. Look, I'm not ready for this. I'm young, I'm green, and I'm a little scared. I haven't been in this situation before, and I'm not sure I can do it. But seniors, trust me, you can. You can save one. I don't know what the world has in store for you. I can't imagine the places you will go and the people you'll meet. But what I do know is that at some point in your journey, sometime, somewhere, the universe is going to put someone in your path who needs saving. And you're going to have to make a choice. A choice that may be risky, may be controversial, may put you at odds with those in charge or with society's norms. My hope and my prayer for you, dear graduates, 
is that when that moment comes, you will reach out, step out, speak out, and save one. And in that saving, you will come to a better understanding of who you are and what you are called to do and be in the world. And it is my hope that when you are the one who needs saving, there is one who stands and speaks and reaches for you as well. There is a well-known saying that comes from the Talmud, and it has been expressed in a variety of ways. In the Mishnah, it reads, Whoever saves a single life is considered by scripture to have saved the world entire. We are all one human family, and that is what family does. And in that saving work we do for one another, seniors. Save one. Amen. <clears throat> Please stand as you are able for the prayers. We come together this day, mindful of where we are and of those who came before us and are still with us. We stand on Turtle Island, which holds all people together as one family. We acknowledge our place on the land of the Iroquois Confederacy, still vibrant today, which includes the Susquehanna and the Seneca and other nations created by Sky Women. We remember our connections to everything in the natural world and our call to care for the rest of creation. Let us pray together. Lavish giver of all good things, we come before you this day to offer thanks for all that has, that has led us to this moment in our lives. We are grateful for all those who have brought us this far on the way, staff and faculty, family and friends, teachers and mentors. We give thanks for their love, guidance, and encouragement. We are especially mindful of those beloved family members and friends who are not with us today, whom we hold in our thoughts and our hearts, those whose names are recorded in the bulletin, and those whose names we remember silently now. Find us together over time and space. Eternal source of life and light, we come before you this day rejoicing, celebrating these gifted graduates, and all they have been able to accomplish. We celebrate them in all their diversity, in their varied, varied backgrounds, talents, and identities, and in all the multiple ways they have positively impacted Gettysburg College. Beacon of hope and keeper of the future, we come before you this day in hope and expectation. We stand at the threshold, poised to enter into new places, new spaces, and new phases of life. We ask for strength, guidance, and courage for hearts to open those who are suffering and in need, and minds open to new perspectives and ideas, work in us such that, we all, such that we use all we have been given for the good of the neighbor and the stranger. We pray in confidence and anticipation. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated.
At this time, I would invite the members of the senior class only to stand. And everyone else, please remain seated. <laughs> members of the senior class, as you leave our community, we wish to bid you farewell. A reading from Isaiah 43. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. When you came to this community, we rejoiced to welcome you into our life together. In this community, you have come to know and share in God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. Please join me in prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for these seniors and for the time we have shared with them. As they have been a blessing to us, so now send them forth to be a blessing to others. Amen. Everyone, please now stand to receive the benediction. When I finish the benediction, if you have taken off your cap, you can put it back on. Although it is rainy, it is still a beautiful afternoon, and we give thanks to God, the creator of heavenly lights, for all the good gifts that have been poured out on us. Thank you, God, for the gift of life. Each day offers another opportunity for us to breathe the good air and delight in this beautiful world which continues to dazzle us with examples of your handiwork. From the smallest of creatures to the expanse of the sky, we give thanks for the earth and all that is in it. Thank you, God, for the gift of people in our lives who we are blessed to know and to love. From the moment we are born, there are people who love us, care for us, watch over us, and support us. So we thank you for parents, grandparents, siblings, cousins, and friends, those near and far, old and new, all of whom have helped us become who we are today. Thank you, God, for the opportunity you gave us to learn at Gettysburg College. Here we have listened and learned, challenged and changed, lived and loved. May we never forget the lessons we have learned. And finally, thank you, God, for giving us all a chance to go out and make a difference in the world. We know that to whom much is given, much is required. Help us to be good stewards of all the good gifts we have been given and to share with the world everything we have. Amen. Thank you.